So we examined why God commanded the Prophet to marry Zainab and it was basically to break this Arab custom of adoption and to demonstrate to society, number one, that the wife of your adopted son is not technically your daughter-in-law, that's number one. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to demonstrate that in Islam there should be no racism, no arrogance, we should not feel strong about social class. So Zainab was married to who? To a former slave, Zayd. Now the Prophet is a great Prophet, he has the highest status in society, yet the Prophet married Zainab who was married to a former slave. In doing so, the Prophet was breaking these barriers. Don't judge people based on these uh, social relationships. Just because she was married to a slave, former slave, it does not make her any less worthy in society, any less valuable. And the Prophet was also giving significance to divorced women. You see the Prophet, most of the women that he married were what? Were they virgin or divorced? A lot of them. A lot of them were divorced, why? The Prophet could have asked for any woman that he wanted. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the Prophet to marry Thayyibat, previously married woman? Because usually a woman who's been divorced, she has lesser of a status, either she's stigmatized or people view her negatively. She's definitely not viewed in Arab society at the time to be equal with a virgin lady. Arabs had this stratification, the social, social stratification. The Prophet wanted to, marry, to break that barrier. So what if a woman is divorced? She's not any less than any other person. She's not any less human. She's a citizen just like any other citizen. Now how do you get these rigid people to understand that? Words, verses, they can only go so much. But when their leader, their Prophet breaks that barrier, breaks that stigma and he himself marries a divorcee that gives status to a divorcee. Now it's much more difficult for people to come say, ah, oh, she's a divorcee. Well, the Prophet of Allah married a divorcee. So we see that there are so many reasons Allah commanded the Prophet to marry Zainab. It's important to know this historical context when understanding these marriages. So let's get to know Zainab a little bit better. She was the daughter of Jahsh ibn Ri'ab ibn Ya'mur. Her mother was Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib. Umayma, the daughter of who? Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib is the grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi So what does that make Zainab in relation to the Prophet? His cousin, his maternal cousin, meaning, uh, meaning he is her cousin through her mother, not through her father, through her mother. So she is the cousin of the Prophet She was indeed a very honorable lady. There are a number of traditions that praise her spirit of charity. One hadith would state, كانت كثيرة التصدق في حياتها. She had the habit of constantly giving charity. And when she passed away, she did not leave a single dirham or dinar. She had given everything away for the poor and in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One hadith which Ibn Sa'd mentions in his tabaqat, Ibn Sa'd is a Sunni historian, he mentions this book in At-Tabaqat al-Kubra, volume 8, page 87, he says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَعَلَيْهِ يَوْمًا وَهُوَ جَالِسٌ مَعَ نِسَائِهِ Once the Prophet was sitting amongst his wives and he said the following statement, أَطْوَلُ كُنَّ بَاعًا أَسْرَعُ كُنَّ لُحُوقًا بِي the one amongst you who has the greatest arm. In Arabic, when you say longest hand, longest arm, what does that mean? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an expression, giver. The one who gives most, the one who's most charitable. By the way, I saw one hadith, I don't know if the source is reliable or not, but one of these historians mentioned it. When the Prophet mentioned this hadith, some of the wives of the Prophet, they started to compare their arms with the arms of the other woman. <laughs> they took it literally. 
I don't know if that's uh, verified or not, but some historians have mentioned that. When the Prophet made the statement, the, the, the wives of the Prophet got their hands out trying to see, okay, who has the longest arm? So the Prophet says, the one who's most charitable, she would be the first to follow me, meaning the first to die after me. So many of these women, because they wanted to meet the Prophet after his death, they would try to be charitable. Zainab was the top amongst the wives of the Prophet who was charitable. Of course, this is after Lady Khadija No one matches Lady Khadija in her spirit of charity. We're talking in Medina after the Prophet had migrated. We even have a hadith from Aisha in which she praises Zainab. She says she was truly a worshiper of God. She was a place of refuge for orphans and widows. They could always go to her. And then Aisha says this, and she was the most beloved wife of the Prophet after me. Now that after me, we know is her own opinion, but the rest is confirmed by other witnesses that she was truly a woman who carried the spirit of generosity and charity. Aisha, she's, she's, she's claiming that she was the most beloved and that next was Zainab, but that's only her claim. In another hadith narrated by Aisha, she, sa she says, وَمَا رَأَيْتُمْ رَأَتَمْ قَدْ خَيْرًا فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ زَيْنَبْ I never saw a woman who was better in religion than Zainab. وَأَتْقَ الله, Someone more pious than Zainab. وَأَصْدَقُ حَدِيثًا Someone more truthful than Zainab. وَأَوْصَلْ الرَّحِمْ Someone who established kinship with, uh, with her relatives like Zainab. وَأَعْظَمُ صَدَقَةً And also her spirit of charity. So, Zainab came from a pretty affluent family and she pretty much donated a lot of her wealth or all of her wealth fi sabilillah azza wa jal. There are historical accounts that state Umar ibn al-Khattab when he became the caliph after some time he established a, a yearly salary for the wives of the Prophet. He singled them out. Let's say he gives the average person a hundred coins a year he would give some wives of the Prophet 12,000. So he gave them that special treatment, which by the way, it is something which a lot of uh, researchers and scholars have criticized. Yes, these are the wives of the Prophet and the wives of the Prophet are to be honored definitely because they are the wives of the Prophet. But why give them more than anyone else? They're citizens just like anyone else. Why start the social stratification? In fact, after the Prophet ﷺ, the first to start social economic, socio-economic stratification was Umar ibn al-Khattab. Because he would give from the public funds, from the Muslim treasury, he would not give everyone the same amount. It depends. If you're from this party, he gives you more. If you're this companion, if you're Talha, if you're Zubair, if you're someone else, he gives you more. If you're Aisha, you get more. Why? Islam abolished all these methods of social stratification. Everyone's equal. You give everyone 500, give them 500. Why give them more from the public funds? There is no verse that sanctions that, no hadith from the Prophet that sanctions that. So on what basis did he give them? So Zainab, you know what she would do with that 12,000? She would spend it all fi sabilillah. She would not keep anything for herself. And in fact, she prayed that first year when she got the 12,000 dirhams, she said, oh God, take me away before Umar gives me the next 12,000 next year because I'm afraid the money will be a source of fitna for me. See, money is a source of fitna. It could e easily play with your mind and heart. She says, oh Allah, this 12,000, I had the courage and the strength to give it away. The next 12,000, I don't know. So take me away before that happens. And that year she died. She passed away. This is year 20 of the Hijrah when Umar ibn al-Khattab was uh, ruling. So, so we find that she was truly a woman of honor, a woman of dignity, and she was the first woman, as the Prophet has had predicted, she was the first amongst the wives of the Prophet to pass away after the Prophet 
When she died, she was 53 years old, according to a number of historians, and she was buried in the Baqiya. 